Hey everybody, this is Matt. So I've got my new Alaskan camper over at the shop now. I've got to get the uh, brackets mounted on the sides and then get the jacks put on. So I've got it over here in the shop and I'm going to get started on that project probably this evening. And if you saw that walking in, that right there is not smiles times. That is my poor light duty tractor with transmission problems that are getting fixed as we speak. So we will be getting started. I got to get this top raised back up and uh, start getting those brackets installed and anchored down like Brian over at Alaskan and Winlock, Washington told me how to do. But the first thing I got to do is I got to get a fire going in this place. It's a bit chilly, although not as bad as it has been. Oh yeah, if you're wondering what these things are right here. So a couple welding projects. When I'm over here working in the evening and I got the fire going, I make candles. And so those are candles that are in there that need to be recycled. So once I get the fire going, I'll melt those down and I'll pour those uh, back into these little pillar candle molds here and we'll have candles. And what do I do with them? We actually light our driveway up with them at night. It's just a thing I like to do on our farm. If we didn't already have a name for our farm, we'd call it, I guess, Candlelit Farms or something like that. But anyway, we'll be getting these brackets on, the Alaskan, and uh, I'll make a video about it and hopefully don't embarrass myself too bad. All right, I figure before I get started, I'll get my stuff ready so when this wax melts, I can, uh, I can put them in the molds. For those of you who have never done this before, and I know this is not supposed to be a video about making candles, but since I'm doing it anyway, I'll show you. This is a, um, a mold for a pillar candle. I just make a very, very simple pillar candle, then we burn them, and then I recycle what's left. So this is called a wick pin. Uh, these are pretty cheap when they come the, from the factory. I've got one that's still factory. This one is factory and you can see the difference on these two. Um, this is just kind of soldered in here and I can see air through it. This will break here pretty soon uh, with the pressure of getting it out of the candle. Um, these other three I'd already broke so I went in and we used a TIG welder and we put some metal on here and we really kind of got these things solid. Now I cannot TIG weld. I just learned a MIG weld uh, so my welding instructor in this class I'm finishing up this week, he put these on with the TIG welder. But anyway, um, these just slide right into the bottom here. They're both convex, I believe is the term I was supposed to learn in the fourth grade or whatever. And they slide into the bottom uh, when the wax is melted. You pour the wax into the cylinder. Um, because these two match, it's supposed to keep the wax from running out. As you can see, some will inevitably run out. Um, but not a lot does and then it cools on the newspaper and then I just break it off and recycle it and melt it again and then as the wax cools which doesn't take too long um, it stops running out the bottom you fill it up to the rim it cools for a while you put some more in uh, to fill the holes that form when it cools a little bit get it all flush up to the top I let it cool overnight I do it out here in the shop it gets pretty cold so the candles are not perfect uh, they're cracked and stuff but honestly for my purposes not a big deal come back the next day pull the wick pin out. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. And with the freezing overnight, the candle is usually shrunk and it usually slides right out of the mold. Sometimes it doesn't and thus 
my methods of getting things out. I've got some dents in the top of one or, one or two of these molds. But yeah, that's candle making and that's how I do it anyway. All right, so I need to raise the top so I can work on him. And uh, you know, the standard, sorry, the standard uh, security lock on Alaskan. I saw this on all the videos and then of course the young man I bought this camper from had the bungees on to make sure the door stays shut and I am just fine with that. So we'll get it open. I've got it plugged into 110 for the first time since I bought it. All right, so this door pops open on me when I travel. So that's something I'm gonna have to figure out how to keep that shut. So that's something I will have to do. And then uh, right in here, I've got my, i pull this ladder out. Right in here, I've got my jack, old school jack, and I will raise this baby up here in just a minute and get the sides thrown up and I'll be ready to work on them. Okay, the wax is ready. Now this pitcher will fill about one and three quarters of, of these uh, molds. So I'll do that really quick as I'm multitasking. Now there's gonna be some really artists and candle makers on the internet if you wanna make good candles, you need to watch them. But yeah, this is my deal. So while I'm heating the shop, I'm trying to use it for something else too. I don't sell them or anything though. It's just for personal consumption. So there you go. More about what I do to entertain myself during the winter out here on the farm. Okay, so I've got the cushions pulled off in the dinette area, uh, you can see. And I talked to uh, Alaskan campers, talked to Brian Alaskan campers, and this is the advice he gave me for installing the brackets which the jackets will hook onto. So I've got two of the extended brackets from Rico Triton, or Rico, however you say it, and then I've got four of their jacks, and then of course the jacks come with the regular brackets. So I'm gonna put the extended brackets on the front of the camper to begin with, because those are the only jacks that will need to clear the wheels. The, uh, the, jack, the jack that'll be in the very back of the camper, obviously the wheels will never get to that, so I won't have to worry about those being closer to the camper. Now, I wanna be fair to Brian and what he told me. Brian told me to put the extended jacks on all four corners. I'm not gonna do that to start, so if it's a disaster, that's on me, that's my fault. Um, I'm gonna just start with the two extended jackets, jacks on front, or brackets on front, and see how that works. Um, and we'll just see how, that, see how that part goes. So, getting ready for the install, so Brian told me to install the jacks nine inches on center from the front and from the back of the camper. And this is obviously up at the front, uh, right where the cab over goes up. And then to cheat them both out three inches. And my question, of course, was, well, why did I buy the extended brackets then if they're both going to be coming out, you know, if I want cheating them out three inches, both of them, then they're both gonna be out the exact same width. It doesn't help me getting around the tires. Even though I don't have a dually, I want that extra, that extra width. He said it's not about that, it's about supporting the camper and the extended brackets are better for that, which uh, makes sense to me. Uh, but of course, when you look at the ad for the extended bracket from Rico Titan, uh, what they talk about is the fact that you can get further away with your jacks to avoid hitting your tires, especially for duallys. Uh, what else Brian told me? was to get a piece of two by two and then to use liquid nails and to attach it right here. Uh, so basically to attach the bottom of the camper right here to the sidewall. Now this has already been done in the back of the camper on both sides with uh, one by twos as part of the framing, but up front here it hasn't been done. 
So I was wondering why you wanted me to do that, but if I put my hand under here and press, I don't know if you guys can see, but there is some play right there. And so with all this weight coming down on the uh, bracket, which is gonna be right there, where I've scratched out the lines, um, you can see that's gonna be quite a bit of weight pushing up on this unsupported floor, or this unsupported bench, I should say, of the camper. So I'm gonna take his advice on that, and I've got this two by two. I've got uh, two of them, one for each side. I'm gonna cut it uh, right here where I've drawn the line so I can get my brackets in and get them mounted. And then I'm gonna use liquid nails, uh, which was his advice. And I'm gonna glue it to the bottom and glue it to the side to try and reinforce. And so when the bracket pushes up on the bottom here of the bench, it's also pushing up on the wall, which is reinforced with the angle iron right over here. And so that should help to support the weight of the camper. So that makes sense to me. With him telling me to cheat in three inches with the bracket, I run into a problem. So I was considering and I wanted to look at that option and I'm not the best at construction. So again, this is all on me. But if I were to cheat in further, I only have about another inch I could come in. Or let me back up on that. He told me to have the brackets mounted so they both cheat out three inches on the outside. So that would mean with the extended bracket to come in further on the mounting because it's longer. But if I were to do that and only leave three inches cheating off the sides out there, I would have a problem here because it would come under my opening to get into the wheel well from underneath the bench. And if I did that, um, A, my mounting holes, I've only got another inch to go, which will give me the ability to mount. Um, so I don't I don't think that's an option, maybe just in my particular camper, maybe in other Alaskans that is an option, but for me it doesn't look like I've got that option. That's measured already uh, nine inches on center from the front of the camper, so I just really don't have that option, so I'm not going to do that. The other thing uh, Brian told me to do is to put a piece of steel or a piece of wood over, uh, over where the bolt holes are going to come up and through to give something to kind of anchor to. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut a piece of plywood, uh, 5 8 inch plywood, and cut it in that square size right there. That'll go over the top of there. I'll bolt through it, uh, washers on both sides. And then of course on the bottom of the camper, uh, the bracket will act as that piece of metal to help distribute that weight uh, down there on the bottom. But I'm also gonna do that up on the top per Brian's instructions. So I need to cut these two by twos to length uh, because I can't, I'm not able to run the two by two behind the bracket or over the top of the bracket uh, because it's not going to, uh, it won't go. It's just too long and it'll obstruct everything. And so I'm gonna cut it to length and it's going to run the length uh, from, the, from the left of the bracket all the way back down to uh, where the kitchen counters start, right over here. Uh, the other thing is I laid out with these two by twos in here, I set uh, the cushions up for the dinette. Uh, it doesn't obstruct the cushions at all with the two by twos in there when they're up, when they're in the 90 degree position. When you lay them out as a bed on each end, they tip up a little bit. I don't see a way around that. I could go with a shorter piece of wood, maybe a one by two that I laid in there and used liquid nails on. I don't know that I'd get the same structural support um, and then they would come up, you know, just half as much. But with the, as much as they tipped up on the ends, it really wasn't that significant. So I don't think it's really going to impact anybody's ability to sleep on this dinette when it's laid out as a bed. So there's my process, there's my thinking, and let's see how it goes.
Hold on. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we got brackets mounted on all four corners. So this is the front of the dinette right here. So you can see we've got our kind of our wood I put up there instead of steel. Brian had recommended steel. Um, I used wood. I think that'll be okay. And uh, honestly, it gives a little more flex. I don't know. I don't know what's going to do. We'll see. Here's the 2x2 two two that we use the liquid nails to kind of reinforce the wall with up front. And then on the other side, uh, same thing. There's our piece of wood that we lagged. Well, we didn't lag through. Uh, we used regular hex bolts through and mounted the brackets underneath on the outside. There's the 2x2. Two probably saw my wife's hands uh, helping me do this earlier. Uh, she was a big help. Now, Brian told me to cheat even the extended brackets out th just three inches on the outside. And um, and by the way, everybody, I kind of did this my own way. Uh, so there's directions that come with the Rico Titan jacks on how to mount the brackets to your camper. And then there's my discussion with Brian uh, specific to Alaskan campers. And it says right there in the manual for the Rico Titan jacks, that uh, you need to, you know, every camper is, is individual, every camper is unique, so their, their recommendations are general. Now, with what Brian wanted me to do with the extended jacks was cheat them out from the camper three inches. I've cheated them out further than that, that's the reason I bought them, uh, otherwise I would have just used the standard jacks, but I wanted to get that jack, the feet of that tripod jack away from the wheels. I don't like that when I'm backing underneath the camper or pulling out from underneath it and I run over the jack and everything gets unstable for a second. So I'm trying to avoid that. That's my whole purpose in buying those extended jacks. Again, I think I only need two, so I've only got two on and they're at the front. Now, had I cheated it out three inches, like uh, what Brian suggested, um, then the bracket would, you know, it would come way underneath this opening where I can get down in my wheel well. And I, so I would have had nothing to mount it to uh, as it extended in further. So I would have still only had four bolts into it, just like I have now. I would have had more bracket underneath, but it wouldn't have been supporting anything because this piece of wood here that opens up into the storage in the wheel well is loose. And I couldn't go any further forward, uh, meaning I couldn't go up. Uh, towards the cab of the pickup past where this piece of wood pops up because under there is a piece of angle iron and on the other side of the camper um, over here, as a matter of fact I think it's on both sides, but under here for sure where you see that copper line coming in, that drops right down below that corner and that's the line to fill the storage tank. And then there's another line over here on this corner that's dropping down and I haven't quite identified what that one does yet. So I wouldn't have been able to uh, move up and get those brackets underneath a more solid piece of wood anyway and, and mount it in more places. So I cheated them out further so I could get around that, that rear wheel when I back underneath it and I pull out. Now, you guys, I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not actually very good at this stuff. And so I may be going down kind of a, a rocky, tilted road in the National Forest and who knows, my camper may fall right off. So you guys need to study this for yourself and talk to Brian for your particular Alaskan. And of course, look at the directions from Rico Titan. Uh, don't just copy what I did. I did my best with the information that I had and my skill level. And so hopefully I'm not doing any major repairs to this camper because of the way I mounted it. Anyway, so that's the front of the camper and the way that it is mounted now. And I'll show you the, the brackets on the outside here in a second. All right, so mounting in the back of the camper was much easier. Uh, the access uh, was a little more difficult, but it wasn't bad. 
But as you can see down there, I didn't have to put the two by two because it's the sidewall is already reinforced right there. Um, so the sidewall is already attached to a piece of wood that is attached to the base of the camper. So I didn't have to do that. I felt like that would have been redundant. Uh, I used the same piece of wood to mount through uh, with washers that kind of countersunk down into it. And then of course on the bottom as well coming up uh, to, to the bracket. And so I did that. And then uh, that's the, I guess the third easiest access point. And this is because of the layout of my particular Alaskan. The, f the fourth access point is underneath the stove for me. Let me uh, move over to that for you. All right, so here's my stove and I pulled the drawers out and I'll kind of dive in here for you. Now that's where I'm at, right in the back corner. This is underneath the stove. Uh, there had previously been something mounted there, but it no longer existed. It didn't fit the, uh, the pattern for the bolt holes for the, for the Rico Titan bracket, so it wasn't that. Uh, but you can see that's reinforced down there already as well, so I didn't put the, the two by two in there. And maybe I made a mistake, I don't know. We will find out as we go down the road in this camper. Uh, but I mounted it the same way. I chose to use plywood uh, rather than steel. And quite honestly, it was easier to obtain, easier to work with. And so that's the reason that I did that. Uh, but that's mounted in there. Brian wanted the brackets on uh, nine inch on center from the back and from the front of the camper on the front I've got it nine inch on center back here on the back I've got it seven and a half inch on center I had reasons for doing that um, but it pushes it back quite a ways I'm not too worried about it but again we'll see if my camper falls off if I rip the bottom out of this on some bumpy road or some washboard then then I'll know uh, but next step for me is to go and get the uh, the mounts on the bottom of the truck to mount the camper on and then I am good to go. All I gotta do then is just attach the jacks to take it on and off and I am good to go down the road, very excited. All right, so here we are on the driver's side of the truck. Uh, this is the rear bracket and so this is the one that was underneath the stove. Uh, you can see how it's mounted there. Uh, so I used a regular washer, a lock washer and then of course the nut snug enough to that. We'll see if that rattles loose going down the road and then I've got that piece of wood up above it and of course the side of the trailer is already reinforced there and then coming up here to the front uh, this is the extended bracket and it comes out quite a ways but if it gets me away from that wheel when i'm pulling in and out i'm going to be very pleased uh, and of course if it works um, and so that's where it's mounted right there and you can see right here if i'd have gone any further in with the bracket i'd just be underneath that piece of wood that pops up to let you get into the wheel well. So it would give me no support anyway. And if I'd have gone any further forward to try and get more support, here is the uh, water tank inlet. And so I couldn't have mounted to it. Plus this angle iron comes down and it's welded to where it comes underneath the camper. So I couldn't have got flush with the bottom. So I didn't see any other option. And maybe you guys are better at this than me and, and you saw other options, but I did not see another option. And so I did it that way sticking out that far, which I'm cool with. That's what I wanted. Uh, we'll see if it, if it creates problems. And again, if it does, it is on me. And one of the things I talked about with Brian is he wanted this piece of, of support steel underneath this bend. He wanted this piece of support steel underneath the camper. That's why he wanted it only to cheat out three inches to about here. Uh, so this would be underneath the camper. And I get it, I know why he wants that, um, but again, um, I suppose I could have, I could have gone in deeper and I could have had this bracket be sticking underneath the opening to access the wheel well and just not bolted it to anything. So the support bracket would have been underneath. And quite honestly, if it becomes an issue or if it's flexing or if I've got a lot of room once I, you know, once I get the jacks hooked up and I, and I pull in and out and I go, oh, I've got more room to spare, maybe I will snug it up a little bit more because this sticks out quite a ways, but you can see uh, it does not stick out. It's hard to tell from the camera angle, but it does not stick out even nearly as far as my mirrors. So there's no issues there, no concerns with that. Okay, so here is the passenger side and same exact method. I had one bolt that was too long. You can see that. Um, but other than that, we made it all work. So same exact method. Um, it's all right here. And uh, same with up there. My shop is cluttered, so it's hard for me to walk up there 
and get you a good shot. But the same exact situation on that side. Uh, there is a, there's an overflow hose that comes down in that corner is what that is, um, which is right there. So I couldn't uh, mount it underneath that anyway, unless I got rid of that overflow hose. And so uh, I mounted uh, just almost in the identical spot on a nine inch center from the front. And I could have pushed it in further, and again, maybe I will. I, if that bracket's sticking out underneath the panel that opens up to get me into the wheel well, that doesn't bother me too bad because I can reach around it. So that's not a big deal, but it's not going to support anything. I won't be able to bolt it to anything. Uh, but if I can get in further later on, then maybe I will do that. But now I've put them on. Now I know how to do it. And now it's time to uh, get the frame mounts mounted on the bottom of the truck and get this all snug down. And once I get that done, and I get the brackets on, uh, I'll show you that as well. All right, so the brackets are all mounted and now we've got the jacks on and I've, you can see I've pulled it off of the truck and I've got it on sawhorses now. Um, so my truck is a 2017 Ford one ton, uh, which I use for farming and for hauling livestock and hauling feed and stuff like that. So. I need the one ton, but they built those really, really tall. And so I had to use wood to get the camper high enough uh, to get it off of the pickup because uh, the jacks would not go high enough on their own. In addition, the previous owner who, I think I've talked about this earlier, had this four, two by four frame that he built to put the camper on to get it up above the cab, which I need for the pickup or for my pickup as well. And I could just barely uh, get this frame out when I used these four by fours to put the jacks on and lift the camper up. And then I actually had to pry up the back of the camper just a little bit to get this wood frame past a bolt that's right below the door in the middle of the, of the camper and slide it out. Once I slid it out, I was able to pull forward and get out from underneath the camper and leave it on the jacks. Uh, a couple things, uh, I mentioned that um, and by the way, there's no weight on these jacks right now. Uh, you can see they're loose. Uh, but a couple things. Um, Brian had wanted me to cheat these extended jacks in further so this support piece would actually be underneath the camper. I may in fact do that now, uh, leaving the bolt pattern where it's at uh, because there's nothing to bolt to if I get it in further. But when I got all the weight on these extended jacks, with the position I have them in right now, um, this did want to flex more and bend more. But with that said, the flex really was coming from where the bolts attach. Uh, it wasn't necessarily coming um, here where the support arm separates from the rest of the jack. Uh, there was a little bit of flex there, but not much, but more flex here. And obviously with this being longer, than the normal brace. Uh, it creates more of a lever and puts more torque uh, here on these bolts. So that's something I'm going to play with. Um, it flexed a little bit more than I was comfortable with, but on the flip side, um, it's going to be a minimal amount of time that the full weight will ever be on these brackets and on these jacks as I'll be lifting it up and then setting it down on the sawhorses or lifting it up and setting it right back down on the pickup. Uh, one of the two. So um, I'm still I'm still deciding what I'm going to do with that. Um, I've ordered the extensions for these jacks and so they're supposed to be here today. So I wanted to get this truck back or excuse me to get the camper back on the truck um, and go do something today but man I just didn't want to lift it up on this lumber again. Uh, it's just too precarious and made me nervous trying to pull out and then backing up next to it made me nervous. So I ordered those jack extensions. They're supposed to arrive later today. And so once that happens, I'm going to get all this lumber out of here and be able to drop the tripods down onto the concrete. And that'll give me about an extra four inches more than I have right now. Those are eight inch extensions and I've got these up on four by fours, which are only three and a half inches tall. Uh, so That'll give me actually about an extra four and a half inches of height when I'm lifting this up, which should give me plenty of clearance and we'll see how stable it is. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if I'm going to adjust, uh, I don't know if I'm going to adjust these extended brackets in or not. We'll have to see how my tires strike the base of these tripods to where it is right now 
uh, once I get the extension. So that's kind of the update. I did get the mounts put on my pickup, so I'm ready to go there with my pickup to be able to completely uh, attach the camper to the pickup, to the frame of the pickup. So really I'm ready to go. I'm just waiting on those extensions. I should have them later tonight. I'll get them put on and I'll let you know how they work. Okay, so I received the extensions for the jacks in the mail. And you can see I've already got them on the jacks right there. And uh, I actually, when I got them, I went ahead and put the camper back on the pickup and took it out overnight last night. And uh, did a quick mid-February getaway, which I'll put a video up about, which was great. It was awesome. But I didn't get this film before I got the camper back on. So a couple things that have come together that I was able to take the camper. So I've got the jack extensions, which means I was able to put the camper back onto the pickup, get it high enough with the tripods being on the ground. That was a big deal for me because when I had it set up on all these pieces of lumber, they just felt too precarious. I did not like that at all. So I got that done. Now when the, when the extensions arrived, the camper was on a set of sawhorses and it was off of the truck and I could not get the extensions into the tripods and into the jack without taking the jacks off of the pickup. Um, so I actually had to remove the jacks, or excuse me, remove the jacks from the camper. I could, it was just too long. So what I had to do, and I'm just telling you this because you may run into this, what I had to do was I had to remove the jack itself from the mounting bracket, get it mounted uh, onto the tripod with the extension down here, and then uh, once it sunk into the extension, uh, then I was able, it wasn't too high, I was able to mount it back onto the Alaskan camper and then use these to raise it up high enough to get the truck under it and to mount the truck on. Uh, another update is at the end of last week, I got the frame mounts put on to the pickup, um, had them welded on. I looked at this and went, I just learned how to weld. I should have been able to do this, but I don't know. They did pretty darn good work. So I was happy with that, and it's all dirty because I, I was out in the desert last night and just came home today. And so I got those mounted on. So I got the chain. I got the turnbuckles. Um, I had the turnbuckles. Put those on, and I got it back on the truck. So I took it out and had a great time. All I've got left to do now is to wire it to the truck, and I just have to get the, uh, the right uh, wiring setup. So the adapter is in the bed of the pickup already. Uh, I just need to get the right one to hook up to the truck. So what I'm going to do in this video or in this part of the video is I'm going to mount the jacks back to the pickup. I keep saying the pickup. I apologize. I'm going to mount the jacks back to the camper to the brackets. I'm going to take off the chains and the turnbuckles, take off the mounts, and then I'm going to raise the camper up and I am going to uh, get the truck out from under it and set it back down on the sawhorses, which should all go well, I hope. But I will show you my process, and hopefully this helps you guys as you're getting going. Um, I, I'm still debating on these extended brackets I've got up front, but I may push them in uh, one more set of uh, bolt holes. I may do that uh, just because of the way they flex, although the amount of time weight's actually on them is minimal. Um, so I'm still debating, but I may do that, but I'm not going to be doing it in this video. Okay, so I have decided to uh, not leave my jacks on and not to get that piece that pivots them up so you can take them with you. I may change my mind on this in the future. I'm kind of holding out right now to decide whether or not I really want to take the camper off when I get to a destination. So since I'm not doing that uh, and it's so easy to put up and take down, um, I'm just leaving the camper on. So that means when I got to take it off, I've got to remount it on to, or uh, remount the jacks onto the brackets, um, which is super simple. It's two bolts. Uh, for me, at least, the, the hex bolt and the nut are both, they're both 15 sixteenths. Um, so super easy. Um, just raise the jack to the right level, line up the holes, get these started, and then very, very easy to get these on and off. You know, if you know how to thread a nut, which apparently I don't.
All right, so there you go. So it's mounted. I'll do the other three, and then I'll show you me lifting it up and taking it off. But pretty self-explanatory on this part. Um, but I will say that I'm very happy with these extensions. You can see I'm able to put the jack back on with it on the truck uh, with the extensions in, and I should be able to lower it down uh, with my mounting uh, frame I've got right here. I should be able to lower it down onto the uh, sawhorses uh, to get it off the pickup once I get the truck out from underneath it. So let me get these other jacks mounted back onto the camper, and then I'll lift it up and pull it out. So I just discovered something that I did not realize before because when I did this before, the top was up on the camper, but this awning that is on here uh, that came with the camper, with the top down, I cannot get this rear jack mounted to the bracket because the gears in there where I rotate it to lift it and lower it is butting up against this awning. And of course, I've got the extended bracket on the front, so it's not an issue there. But back here on the back, it is. So tonight, for me to take this off, I'm gonna have to raise, raise the camper up and put it on the pins and keep it up. And it looks like I'm gonna have to do that to raise and lower it until I either get rid of this awning or remount it somewhere different, maybe above the window. I'll have to look into that. So, the things you learn as you get out and use it. Well, that is my first go round with my new Alaskan camper. Remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just getting started, just trying to figure this out as I go along, but that's how I got everything done, uh, from putting the brackets on, to getting the extensions for the jacks, uh, to getting the frame mounts put on, using the turnbuckles, getting it all mounted, taking it out on a trip, coming back and taking it off. Hopefully that helps you. Hopefully you do it better than me, <laughs> because I am no expert. But. Uh, that was the process for me, real life. Thanks everybody.